Welcome once again. I'm Mert Shane, pastor here at Kiyoki Chapel, and we welcome you to our service. Uh, this is Sunday where we begin uh, to celebrate Epiphany. And so we're hoping that you're doing well, staying safe, and that God is continuing to bless you through this Christmas season. Please feel free to give us your feedback by text and email. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. And also make sure that you continue to uh, send your gifts, uh, even for the end of the year, so that we can uh, continue our ministry here and our missions. And so let us begin with our worship. So we have the prophetic message more fully confirmed. You will do well to be attentive to this, as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Let us pray. Everlasting God, the radiance of faithful souls, you brought the nations to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. Fill the world with your glory and show yourself to all the nations through him who is the true light and the bright and morning star, even Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Our children's sermon today um, pretend for a moment that you are were 2,000 years ago, that you are a studier of the stars, a magi. In that time um, of studying the stars, what kind of stars do you typically see? Well, you might see the Big Dipper or the, uh, the North Star. And so the magi were looking at stars. And in the process, they saw a new star that was very bright. And when they saw it, they knew something was special. They knew that a king was born. And so they set out to find that king. In the process, it took them over two years to get there, to find Joseph and Mary developing the growth of this child, Jesus. As with the Magi, they decided to take gifts. And they took gold, frankincense, or incense, and myrrh, very valuable gifts that they thought were appropriate to give to the Christ child. And so we grow learning about this story about their trip uh, so that we can also follow the stars as it leads us in the right path of our lives. So each time that you sing, Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star, I want you to remember uh, the birth of Jesus so that the stars will help us find our way as we go forward, let us Instead, 
we offer open hands and open hearts. Abiding with us, we pray. We rejoice, O oh God, in this festival of Epiphany. It is a time ignored by the culture and a time even ignored by many of your people. But for those of us gathered at this time, may your light burst upon us in a new way. We have spent days celebrating the birth of Christ, child. We now spend a season celebrating Christ's great work among us. Great burst of light in the world. Even as the Magi were overjoyed upon seeing the star, may we be overjoyed in the light of the cross. Even as the Magi bowed down and worshiped the Christ, may we bow in reverence and love this day. Too often, God, we are people in the dark. We choose to live in darkness and move under the cover of darkness. We believe that our deeds are a secret and that we can do deeds that adversely affect the lives of others without our complicity being known. But most of our dark deeds come to the light. Most of what we do in secret is brought into the open. And all of our deeds are known to you, the one who we hurt most by living outside your will for us. Forgive our frequent slipping into the darkness. Forgive the darkness that we visit on others. And forgive the grief we bring to you, the author of all that is light and true and good. We live before you these that are on our hearts and minds, the sick, the shut-ins, the hungry, the homeless. We pray for our essential workers, for those that care for us through thick and thin, that give of themselves so that we might be able to grow and flourish. We pray for the people of the world and for all the leaders. Help them in their decision making so that we can all grow and prosper. Help us through the difficult days of disasters and killings. Help us to promote war and not, or promote peace and not war. Help us to deal with our imperfections. Help us not to hate, but to show your love in all that we do and everywhere we go. We pray these and other prayers in your Son Jesus' name, who taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
At this time, we give thanks for all those gifts that have been given to us, all the gifts that you have given to others, and for God's continued blessing upon you. So let us pray. We join our gifts with those of your people around the world. Through your mercy, may they provide comfort to the distressed, hope to the despairing, food to the hungry, and determination for all who strive for your shalom. Amen. We give thanks at this time for our Eastern Pennsylvania Conference Cabinet, who has given us the blessing of their sermons. The bishop, Bishop Peggy Johnson, has blessed us with our message today. And so we give thanks to her so that some of us might uh, be able to continue on to be energized by her message. And that we give her thanks. Hello, I'm Bishop Peggy Johnson. I'm the Episcopal leader of the Eastern Pennsylvania and Peninsula Delaware Annual Conferences of the United Methodist Church. I greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and I'll be preaching today, January the 3rd, on Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. Hear the word of the Lord. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, during the time of King Herod, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard these things, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the chief priests and the teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, This is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people, Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming into the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and of frankincense and of myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. Brothers and sisters, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Lord, I thank you for your word. It is manna for our souls. So bread from heaven, feed us till we want no more, and send us out into this world to feed your hungry people. And now, Lord, in spite of me or through me, speak a word to your people. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. The wise men came to worship baby Jesus. And worship is certainly an important part of our life as Christians. We come to our churches to worship the Lord. And at Christmas time we sing, Oh, come let us adore him. Oh, come let us adore him. Christ the Lord. And did you notice that in that hymn, the third verse is actually done in Latin. It was sung for many years in Latin. Venite adoremos, venite adoremos, go come let us adore him. And I read a story about a grandmother who was schooled in Latin, and she wanted her four-year-old grandson to sing venite adoremos for the Christmas pageant. And so she practiced with this boy for quite some time, and on the big night he stood up as proud as he could, and he sang Velveeta Alto Rainbow, Velveeta Alto Rainbow. And certainly, our worship sometimes comes out that way. 
sometimes we get distracted, we get busy, our minds start going in different directions, and we don't truly engage in worship as we should. Worship is so important to our spiritual growth. It's so important to, to just why God created us. And these wise men of old, they came to worship baby Jesus, and they can teach us a lot about the true meaning of worship. So what can we do to worship better? Well, first of all, the wise men will tell you, you must be humble. You must be willing to give of yourself. These people, we don't know much about, but we know they came from far away. They came from the east, and some say that they were scientists, they were bright and capable people, and they had to have some means because they traveled for two years to visit the Christ child. They were humble enough to give up their life for two years in order to experience this newborn king. If you've ever been to the Holy Land, I'm sure you've been to the Church of the Nativity in Bethlehem itself. It's a place where they say Jesus was actually born. And I'm not really, really sure about that, but for sure they've got a church that says it. And if you want to see the exact spot where Jesus was exactly born, you have to go into the basement of the Church of the Nativity. And you have to actually bow your head down to look into that place. And over the top of that canopy or wherever it is you've got to go into, there are the words, only heads bowed in humility can truly worship Christ. And that's really a great message. Humility is what we need to truly worship and to truly serve God. We've got to put ourselves aside and be who God wants us to be and do what God wants us to do. That's where the, the bottom line is. The proof in the pudding is what you do. A few years ago, I went to a food bank and there was a feeding kitchen that went on and so every day they were feeding people at noon and I took note of a woman, an elderly woman, who was in the kitchen, and she was working really hard, cutting carrots and just very focused. And someone said, well, that's the director of the program. And so afterwards, I engaged her in conversation, and I said, gee, you really have a great program here. Tell me about it. And she said, you know, it was a calling from God. She explained that she had been a professor in a very prestigious university teaching sociology. And upon her retirement at the age of 65, she said to God, Lord, what would you have me do? And God said, go work in that food kitchen. And she said, Lord, excuse me, I don't think you heard me. What would you like me to do, the professor of sociology? And the Lord said, go work in that food kitchen. Finally, she did. And she worked there for 20 years. And she turned the place upside down. She set up all kinds of social programs, housing, mental health services, medicine, emergency needs. She was humble enough to put herself aside and all her pride, all her education to do the very thing God had created her to do in her senior years. Oh, what a lesson that is for us. How we also need to put ourselves aside and truly worship God with what God is calling us to do, whether we like it or not. It's what humility is all about. It's a great way to show God how much you love Him. Secondly, the wise men teach us the importance of flexibility. The wise men arrive in Jerusalem, where, of course, kings are supposed to be living, right? And they found that it was the wrong place and the wrong king. Instead of a little baby, there was an old man and a nasty one. But they went for plan B, plan Bethlehem. They were willing to change their plan and go to another place to keep looking for this child. Friends, the pandemic has taught us a lot about Plan B. Amen? We pastors are all televangelists now with new platforms, new Zoom, new people we've never seen before, new music, even new ways of giving our offering. Flexibility is important as we worship God. We just can't keep everything the same way. We can't script church so much that every piece of worship is so controlled that God can't even get in the door. I remember one time when I was working in the deaf church that I served, I was baptizing a deaf child, and she liked the baptism. She thought that was really cool. I put water on her head, and she signed, more water, please. And I said, no, 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 it's, it's okay. One, one time's enough. And she said, more water, please. And so finally she jumped into the bowl, picked up the water, and just started baptizing me, her, everybody. The place went crazy. 
I had to stop the plans I had for worship and let this little child take over because she taught us that day that all God's people are baptized Christians. We're all part of the family of God. So friends, don't be too tightly wound in your plans, in the way you worship God. Uh, be willing to be flexible. Let the Spirit in. Let God take control and watch God work. Thirdly, the wise men taught us about giving. They cared enough to give the very best. Wise men gave gold, frankincense, and myrrh. These were valuable gifts in that day. They were symbolically valuable as well. For truly, Jesus was King, God, and sacrifice. So friends, give God the best that you have. Give God everything. Jesus said, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And I say where your heart is, is evidenced by how you give your treasure. <laughs> Giving is a very important response to worship. It shows how much you love God. And if you love much, you give much. And if your love is little, you give little. Worship God with your means. Finally, go home a different way. The wise men were warned in a dream not to go back to Jerusalem. And so they went home by a different way. And of course, that's something of an allegory for true worship. True worship means you leave with marching orders. You leave with a different heart, a new perspective, a new challenge for something God wants you to do. I like the sign I saw in the back of a church I visited recently that says, the service is over but the real service begins now. And that's how true worship ought to be. Worship should point us to a new direction on what we can do out in the world when we're done in church. Francis Asbury, the father of American Methodism, was converted to Methodism as a young person in England. And he joined the societies and he was a devout Christian. And he heard that there was going to be the great father, John Wesley, preaching at a church in Bristol one night. And so he made plans to be sure to be in that church service and hear the famous John Wesley preach. And he preached his heart out at the end of the sermon. Wesley said, I want preachers to go to America. Is there someone out here that can go to America? We need them to spread scriptural holiness across the land. And at that moment, Francis Asbury felt God had given him marching orders, and God wanted him to say yes to Brother Wesley. And so he came forward that night and said, yes, I will go. And he did. He went off in a boat and went to Bristol to America, and he never came back. He left church a different way, and he changed the world forever. So look for a call in every act of worship. A call to change, a call to do, a call to go, a call to give, and then you have truly worshipped. So friends, follow the star, not just at Christmas time, but always. Follow the star that leads you to Christ, and you will find him, and you will be a wise worshiper, just like the wise men. And wise worshipers always do these things. Humility, flexibility, sacrifice, and servant. So be it. Let us pray. Oh, gracious God, we thank you so much that you've given us a new year, and you've given us the challenge of, of doing worship in a better way. So, Lord, help us to truly worship you and not take for granted the opportunities we have to be in your presence. Lord, may we hear your word for us this day, this year, that we might truly worship you in spirit and in truth. This we pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.